Before I begin, I want to take a moment to talk about today's news and the attempted attacks on President Clinton, President Obama, their families, public officials, individuals, and organizations. We cannot tolerate those cowardly attacks, and I strongly condemn all who choose violence. I'm grateful to the Secret Service, as well as the local and federal law enforcement for all they do on a daily basis to keep us safe and encourage people across the country to choose kindness over hatred. I want to welcome you all to the White House to reflect on the progress this administration has made in tackling the opioid crisis, and more importantly, to look ahead at the work still to be done. We are here to talk about the continued actions we are taking to combat the opioid epidemic which my husband will talk about in a few minutes. I must say I'm proud of our president and the work being done in the White House and across so many agencies to help those affected by drug abuse and addiction. Just last week, I visited Thomas Jefferson University Hospital to learn about their maternal addiction treatment, education, and research program called MATTER. This program supports families and babies born with neonatal absence syndrome by providing mothers with the tools they need to help become successful parents. My campaign, Be Best, is committed to helping children and the many issues they face as they grow up. And sadly, drug abuse is one of those issues. Be Best will continue to shine a light on successful programs like MATTER that demonstrate positive results for children. Over the past year, I have traveled both nationally and internationally learning about many of the programs offered through private organizations, schools, and hospitals, which are meant to help children and families as they deal with drug addiction. What I constantly hear is the need for support at all levels. Law enforcement needs our support and the resources necessary to stop criminals from putting drugs on the streets. Families need the resources to get treatment and follow-up care for, follow for loved ones. Those who are addicted need the support, resources, and guidance to know they are fighting a disease and should not be ashamed. Young mothers need the support necessary to not only beat their addiction, but get the tools needed to become successful parents. Babies born addicted need the resources for treatment, but also need follow-up care for years to come. I was honored to be part of a roundtable comprised of several experts at Thomas Jefferson University Hospital that was convened to help with the design and implementation of a new initiative the Department of Health and Human Services is working on to measure the long-term health outcomes and needs of infants suffering from neonatal absence syndrome. As a nation, we must come together to fight this epidemic by providing as many resources as possible and I know that as long as my husband is in office, this will remain a priority. Fighting opioid abuse goes across all party lines. Thank you all for being here and being part of the fight to end this epidemic. It is now my honor to introduce the President of the United States. Thank you very much, Blana. I know how hard you've worked on this. 
And uh, that's just one of many languages that you know. So it's uh, just amazing the way you can do it. Thank you very much, darling. Appreciate it. Also, I want to thank Mrs. Pence for being here. You have been uh, just so terrific working alongside of our great Vice President. And thank you very much, Karen. Really appreciate it. I'd like to begin today's remarks by providing an update on the suspicious packages and devices mailed to current and former high-ranking government officials. The safety of the American people is my highest and absolute priority. I have just concluded a briefing with the FBI, Department of Justice, Department of Homeland Security, and the U.S. Secret Service. As we speak, the packages are being inspected by top explosive experts, and a major federal investigation is now underway. The full weight of our government is being deployed to conduct this investigation and bring those responsible for these despicable acts to justice. We will spare no resources or expense in this effort. And I just want to tell you that in these times, we have to unify. We have to come together and send one very clear, strong, unmistakable message that acts or threats of political violence of any kind have no place in the United States of America. Thank you. Thank you. It's a very bipartisan statement. I can tell you from both sides. We both agree on that. This egregious conduct is abhorrent to everything we hold dear and sacred as Americans. My administration will provide additional updates as they become available. And I just want to thank everybody for their understanding. We're extremely angry, upset, unhappy about what we witnessed this morning and we will get to the bottom of it. We're gathered together today to address America's drug and opioid crisis, and a crisis it is, which now claims 70,000 lives a year. One year ago, I addressed the nation in this very room and declared the opioid crisis a national public health emergency. And that's a legal statement. That's a legal term. Today, we are here to update the American people on the historic action we have taken and to sign landmark legislation to defeat the opioid epidemic. I want to thank the Cabinet members in attendance today, Attorney General Jeff Sessions, thank you, and Secretaries Ryan Zinke, Alex Acosta, Alex Azar, Ben Carson, Betsy DeVos, Robert Wilkie, and Kirsten Nielsen. Thank you all very much. I know how hard you're working on this and other things. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you also to Kellyanne Conway for her tremendous efforts. Thank you, Kellyanne. I appreciate it. We're also honored to be joined by state and local leaders, private sector partners, along with families who have suffered terrible heartache from the opioid epidemic. Together, we are going to end the scourge of drug addiction in America. We are going to end it, or we are going to at least make an extremely big dent in this terrible, terrible problem. Over the last year, we have mobilized the entire federal government to address this crisis. We have secured $6 billion in new funding to combat opioids, the most money ever received in history. I want to thank members of Congress in attendance today, terrific people who have been instrumental in this effort. Senators Lamar Alexander. Lamar, thank you. Lamar, thank you very much. Rob Portman. Thank you, Rob. Congressman Greg Walden, 
And also, Greg, for Right to Try, all of us, everybody over there, Right to Try. It's having a tremendous impact already. Thank you very much. Along with Senators Shelley Moore Capito, Bill Cassidy, Maggie Hassan, Representatives Gus Bilarakis, Michael Burgess, Barbara Comstock, John Faso, Bob Goodlatte, Garrett Graves, Richard Hudson, Mike Kelly, Bob Latta, Keith Rolfus, Tim Wahlberg. I want to just thank you all. There could be a couple of extras. We'll thank you afterwards, okay? Well, thank you afterwards. Thank you. Thank you. It's a great job. They work hard on it. They feel so strongly. My administration has also launched an unprecedented effort to target drug dealers, traffickers, and smugglers. We are shutting down online networks, cracking down on international shipments, and going after foreign traffickers like never before. For the first time ever in August of this year, the Department of Justice indicted two Chinese nationals who were shipping fentanyl and other lethal drugs to our country. Here with us today is Sam Mortensen of the Nebraska State Patrol. Where is Sam? Here, sir. Oh, I thought he was around here someplace. Thank you, Sam. In April, Trooper Mortensen seized 118 pounds of fentanyl, enough lethal doses to kill 26 million people. Is that even believable? Can you imagine? Trooper Mortensen, that was a job well done. And I'd like to just have you come down here just for a second. You didn't know you were going to do this. Come on. Come on. Say a few words. First off, thank you for having me here today. This is a huge honor, not just for myself, but to represent all of the law enforcement officials in Nebraska. Every day, there's a lot of people out there that are doing what I did. They're doing it day in, day out, and there's a lot of people that came before me that taught me how to do this job. And so, on behalf of them, behalf of myself, and behalf of my family, thank you for having me here. Thank you so much. Good job. He didn't know he was going to do that. <laughs> and I see a future politician. Be careful, folks. It's a great job. Thank you, Sam. Last year, the brave men and women of ICE and Border Patrol, people that we have to really thank, they are doing some job, seized more, right? <laughs> really doing a job. And it's a hard job. Seized more than 2.8 million pounds of illicit and deadly drugs. Early estimates show that in 2017 and 2018, fentanyl seizures were more than four times higher than the previous two years. We're really putting big effort into fentanyl and other drug seizures. Last year, we increased the average federal sentence for drug traffic into its highest level since 2013. We're also putting a stop to another dangerous supply of opioids over prescribing. Doctors over-prescribing. They have to be careful. Over the past 20 months, our Department of Justice and Department of Health and Human Services Fraud Strike Force targeted a combined $3.3 billion in waste, fraud, and abuse related to the unlawful distribution of opioids. That's by far the most ever. The total amount of opioids being prescribed has decreased by nearly 20 percent in a very short period of time. Very proud of that. We have nearly doubled funding for opioid research, including the development of non-addictive painkillers. Over the past 20 months, our national prescription drug take-back days — very important, really something — have collected more than 2.7 million pounds of unused or unwanted prescription drugs. 
We have launched one of the largest ad campaigns to keep young Americans from getting addicted in the first place. If we can do that, those ads are so well — I mean, they're so important. It's one of the most important things that I've told Melania and Kellyanne. We put on really powerful ads. We pay for those ads. And we get people to stop before they ever start. And maybe that should be the name of the campaign, Stop Before They Ever Start. And you won't see the results immediately, but you'll see the results in the future, in very quick future. So I'd love you to do that, and I know that's what you're doing. For those already addicted, we are delivering life-saving help. Last month, my administration gave state and local governments, community organizations, and other groups an additional $1 billion to address prevention, treatment, and recovery. We have given states waivers from outdated rules and increased by 50 percent the number of people being treated in specialty facilities for heroin addiction. Tremendous amounts of money and care have been given to those specialty facilities, and they are working. They're having a tremendously positive effect. We're working to screen 100 percent of the federal inmates for drug addiction so we can offer them the treatment they need while they serve their sentence. And when they get out right. — and when they get out, our economy has become so strong that they are getting jobs for the first time almost ever, certainly in memory. They're coming out into an incredible society, an incredible economy. People are hiring these inmates. They're getting a second and sometimes a third chance. And the response has been incredible from the people that are doing the hiring. This is the first time that's ever happened. They're getting a chance. And it makes me very proud. And that's because of a tremendous economy. And people also opening up their hearts and minds to giving these people a second chance. So that's really terrific. Thank you. Our Department of Labor has awarded more than $30 million to states to expand apprenticeships — very special word to me, the word apprenticeship. <laughs> and on the job — yeah, you get it, see? And on the job training for those who are recovering from addiction. Joining us today is Dee Dee Wheeler from upstate New York. Dee Dee was born in prison to a mother struggling with alcoholism. Dee Dee struggled with drug addiction for years. But three and a half years ago, she began a really incredible recovery program. Since then, she has been drug-free. Dee Dee now earns a living as a very talented seamstress and designer. They love her. They love her at that firm, proudly bringing home a paycheck to provide for her two sons. Didi, you inspire us, and I'd love to have you come up and just say a few words. Didi. First of all, I want to thank God. Without him, it's impossible. Nothing's impossible with God. I just would like to thank the Hoven home that gave me a foundation. Um, I went through the home in 2016, 15, excuse me, I'm a little nervous. Um, <laughs> and um, I completed the program. It gave me a sense of um, well-being. Um, and I'm a graduate. I completed and I'm a graduate. And Due to the fact that um, I'm with Unshattered, Unshattered is a foundation. Um, it gave me a sense of purpose um, because I know I couldn't go back to Jersey to go back to people, places, and things. And I'm just honored to be here, and I'm proud to say that I'm drug-free and I surrender my life. And I just want to thank God. Thank you, Didi. 
Well, I didn't tell Didi and Sam that they were speaking, because this way they'd be nervous coming in. Now I just put them up. And did they do great or what, right? If we would have given them advance notice, you couldn't have done better than that, no matter how hard you worked. It was great. Both Sam and Didi, thank you thank very you, much. Sam. Fantastic job. In order to build on our progress, in just a few moments, I will sign the single largest bill to combat drug crisis in the history of our country. I especially want to thank Senator Rob Portman for working to ensure that the bill gives law enforcement the tools and resources they need to stop ultra-lethal — think of that word — ultra-lethal — that's a, a big statement — drugs like fentanyl from being trafficked throughout our mail. And, Rob, I do have to thank you. I know how hard — please, stand up, please — how hard you've worked. Thank you. Thank you, Rob. This legislation also includes vital messages to expand support for addiction recovery and treatment and the transition back to independent living with a very, very steady job. Great job. Joining us today are 21 of our nation's top companies and organizations. These are fantastic, successful companies that are putting back. They're giving back, and they're putting back who are going to be announcing bold commitments to help us solve this crisis. In just a few moments, we are here to uh, listen to these incredible incentives and benefit by them. Together, we will defeat this epidemic — it's a true epidemic — as one people, one family, and one magnificent nation under God. I want to thank everybody for being here. This is a tremendous honor for me and tremendous honor for Melania, who's worked so hard on this. And I appreciate that very much, First Lady. Really a fantastic job. Karen, thank you very much. Really appreciate it. God bless you all. God bless America. Thank you very much. Thank you. Mr. Brian Huseman, Vice President, Public Policy. Amazon will help first responders more efficiently access critical medical records and has programmed Alexa voice service to answer important questions about opiates and addiction. Belden Industries, Mr. John Stroop, President, Chief Executive Officer, and Chairman of the Board. Belden will expand their rehab and employment program to two additional U.S. facilities in 2019 and provide a blueprint for companies to adopt to recruit and retain employees supporting recovery. Blue Cross Blue Shield Association Mr. Scott P. Sirota, President and CEO of Blue Cross Blue Shield Association Blue Cross Blue Shield Association will launch Blue Distinction Centers for Substance Use Treatment and Recovery and will establish a toll-free national hotline to provide all Americans a way to locate designated treatment centers. Cigna Mr. Alan Muni, Chief Medical Officer. Cigna will partner with the Veterans Health Administration to help veterans manage pain, improve access to opiate addiction treatment, and improve mental well-being, and will work to reduce opiate-related overdoses in various communities by 25 percent within three years. CVS Health, Mr. Thomas Moriarty, Executive Vice President, Chief Policy and External Affairs Officer, and General Counsel. CVS Health is committed to installing 1,100 additional permanent medication disposal units in communities and reaching 250,000 students and parents with its opioid abuse prevention program by the end of 2019. Dispose RX, Mr. John Holliday, CEO. Dispose RX is committed to stopping opioid abuse by contributing Dispose RX packets that can remove over 10 million opioids from our nation's medicine cabinets. Emergent Biosolutions, Mr. Mike Kelly, President, U.S. Operations. Emergent Biosolutions will offer free Narcan nasal spray to all 16,568 public libraries and to each of the 2,700 YMCA locations in the United States. Facebook, Mr. Kevin Martin, Vice President, U.S. Public Policy. Facebook is committed to addressing the opioid epidemic 
to impactful public-private partnerships, including a link to SAMHSA's helpline in search and supporting the Ad Council PSA and DEA Take Back Day. Global Teen Challenge, Mr. Ed DeShields, board member. Global Teen Challenge, the largest treatment center worldwide, is building a national treatment information system so its 250 U.S. treatment centers can understand which recovery programs are showing the most promise of success from addiction. Google, Ms. Susan Molinari, Vice President of Public Policy and Government Affairs. Google has created a locator tool for National Take Back Day that they'll promote on Google.com homepage and will launch a partnership with Walgreens to display permanent drug disposal locations on Google Maps. Johnson & Johnson, Ms. Linda Murray, Senior Vice President, Consumer Experience and Global Editor-in-Chief, Baby Center. Johnson & Johnson will continue educating America's nurses and physicians to fight substance abuse and launched an opioid addiction awareness campaign that reached more than 2.5 million expectant parents via Baby Center. Lidos, Mr. Roger Crone, Chairman and CEO. Lidos is committing to an additional $3 million to opioid-related causes and furthering efforts to educate our workforce of 32,000 employees and launching a coalition of dozens of companies to address the crisis. MyPillow, Mr. Mike Lindell, CEO. MyPillow employs workers directly after graduating from faith-based drug treatment and will soon launch the Lindell Recovery Network to bring hope, recovery, and mentorship to thousands struggling with opioid addiction. National Head Start Association, Mr. Damon Carson, Board Chairman. The Head Start community will expand training to all 245, 792,000 staff in over 21,000 centers nationwide to address the far-reaching impacts of parent substance use disorder on young children and families. National Safety Council, Ms. Debbie Herzman, CEO. National Safety Council will spread awareness of the crisis through the Prescribed to Death Traveling Memorial and will educate 1,000 more physicians on safer prescribing practices. Red Cross, Mr. Jack McMaster, President, American Red Cross Training Services. Red Cross will offer our online course, First Aid for Opioid Overdoses, to give all Americans the knowledge to respond to a suspected opioid overdose emergency, and will integrate opioid education in over 3 million annual first aid trainings. Rite Aid, Ms. Jocelyn Conrad, Executive Vice President for Pharmacy. Rite Aid is offering free Dispose RX packets with new opioid prescriptions. Its foundation installed 312 medication disposal units and launched the Prescription Drug Safety Initiative for students across the country. Ultimate Fighting Championship, Mr. Lawrence Epstein, Senior Executive Vice President and COO. UFC commits to launching a public service campaign to bring attention to the opioid crisis using UFC athletes, its powerful social media platforms, and popular live events to educate millions of people on the dangers of opioid abuse. Unshattered, Ms. Kelly Lingard, Founder and CEO. Unshattered will expand their partnerships with recovery centers across the country and provide employment and job skills training to double the number of women that we serve by the end of 2020. Walgreens, Mr. Rick Gates, Walgreens Senior Vice President for Pharmacy and Healthcare. Walgreens is expanding its medication disposal program to all of its stores and collaborating with Google to provide information about the location of disposal sites on Google's platform. Walmart, Mr. Paul Beam, Senior VP of Health and Wellness Pharmacy Operations. Walmart will continue to limit initial acute opioid prescriptions to a seven-day supply, use analytics to block illegitimate prescriptions, and require e-prescriptions for all scheduled drugs by January 1, 2020.